And by having that solely in mind, he made the good pitch, got it out in front of the running back, and he got just inside the pylon to make a 21-20. Vicente Escobedo will try to even the game here. The kick is up. It is good. And we are all tied, 21 all, here in Pahokee, in the muck ball. And this game is living up to everything that we thought it would. Yep. Right now, Lisa Pride is on the sideline. Lisa. Well, Dan, the sidelines are packed with former Glade Central players and alumni. I'm here with two former players that played in 1984 with head coach Willie Sneed. This is Tim Sims and Lewis Oliver. And guys, you went in there, you talked to the team, you talked to the coach during halftime. What did you say to them? We just told them pretty much to keep their head up and maintain their composure. And as long as we weather the storm in the first half and we come out the, the second half, we think we had a better team that we would beat them. It's our tradition that we own these guys. We've been beating them throughout their life, and we'll still beat them. And that also that this go, this, this something they'll carry on throughout their lives. So they want to go out there and win for their senior year. And obviously, what you said worked. They're already, you know, leading in the first. I mean, tie the game right here in the second half. Well, I mean, I felt like the team that came out at the second and begin, beginning of the second half, whatever team scored first, I think will pretty much win the game because they, they go into the second half with a lot of momentum. And I was just telling Coach Sneed, hey, you guys got a better team. I mean, both teams got a lot of pride. This rivalry, bit, this rivalry has been going on for years and years, and you know, you don't want to lose. I mean, I know we're playing on their home field. So we want to take take the W, take it back to Belgrade, and uh, you know, right now we're looking pretty good. Coach Steed is probably really happy to have two guys supporting him in his program right here and right now. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Lisa and Lewis Oliver, sporting the dreads there. Looking good. Well, I'll tell you what. Look for uh, Lewis. I think they got some eligibility left. They'd be out there playing. That, that's <laughs> what this game brings, though. This alumni come back, and it's so important. It's very similar to University of Miami when all those players come back and and give you that support. It just, I think it just makes you play harder. You've all right, got I, other I, responsibilities. An uneventful kickoff there as uh, Holly kicked the ball into the end zone on his second kickoff kickoff attempt of the game. So he continues to be Mr. Versatility. He he should be a labeled athlete on the, on the roster well, as well. I haven't seen anything that he can't do. Getting back, let's get it back to Pahokee a little bit. That they need a play. They need to make a big offensive play here because Glade Central basically owned the third quarter. There's only 421 left, and they've had the ball most of the time. And on first down there, just a, uh, a short run into the line for maybe a half a yard, and that is not going to do it against this Raider defense. Here is a give, and this is going to do it. Cleared out by a block, and down the sideline races uh, Vincent Smith, I believe, number 22. Yes, it is. Wow, what a terrific block he got. Uh, sprung out there and again that looked like a little misdirection Bill where uh, they were faking to the right and go left here's yeah. the replay here's the replay number 13 for Pahokee makes an unbelievable block as a wide receiver he pancakes his man and it allows the running back to get to the sideline there's the hit here on the sideline it's pretty doggone stiff and the ball goes out of bounds. But give that one to the wide receiver. What a terrific block. And uh, just what the doctor ordered, like you said, Bill, they needed a lift, and now they have it. And they have a first down in Glade Central Territory just inside the 50-yard line. And around the right side with running room once again is Vincent Smith, who uh, seems to have the hot hand here for Pahokee all of a sudden, ripping off two big runs. Yeah, Johnny Dixon, the linebacker, got pinned inside, rerouted himself, and made the tackle, ran the, the quick running back down. But that was the situation where you have great eyesight at the tailback. You go into the line, nothing there, and you have the ability to get out. Watch this. He cuts in here, but nothing there, so he's going to make his break to the outside. And Dixon, with his great speed, makes the tackle on the sideline. Yeah, I, I was going to say, it looked like Dixon was almost didn't have the angle, but uh, he's got some speed himself, obviously. Uh, and Mr. Dixon, by the way, is, has already committed to play at Auburn. Yeah, so uh, I, I think, I think uh, his pedigree shows there that he, he's got the speed for sure. Now, when they come to recruit this area, as I know fully well, having coached down here for 20 years, they come to Pahokee and they come to Glade Central 
and then anywhere else they can have time. But they spend a lot of time out here, and justifiably so. There's, there's just a plethora of athletes out here, and they're uh, playing each other tonight. Pahokee needed that, Dan. I saw them, you know, teetering on the, on the edge, and they got the big play. 3.35 to go in the third quarter. 21 all, Glade Central and Pahokee in the muck bowl. Pahokee now driving after two big running plays by number 22, Vincent Smith. Brings up a second and short, and do we try to get number three involved here, Martavius Odoms on a second and short? No, we don't. We get the fullback involved, and he breaks through the line and picks up some big yards. That's Willie Jenkins who picks up the first down and quite a bit more as the Blue Devils are now rolling. Yeah, the fullback gets the ball and on the little trap play again, and this is what happens when you're trying to defend off tackle. There's the trap blocking, and Odoms gets his little seam, breaks an arm tackle there, and gets vertical for a nice game, first and 10. Yeah, Samuel Putman had a chance at him, but could only just uh, grasp straws there as uh, Jenkins picks up another nice gain. First and 10 from the 30 yard line. Shepard gonna pitch it out to his left and that's not gonna go anywhere as uh, Glades recovers. And he is uh, down in the scrum there is I believe number 22 Vincent Smith. If we, if we could see this again, I don't know if we will or not, but watch number 77, Jartavius Jackson. <laughs> He's 6'5", 295, he runs down the line of scrimmage and actually has a hand in the tackle. How do you coach that? That that could be why Here the, he comes. that could be why the Florida Gators are interested. Oh in. my big, goodness! Big just, and fast is a lethal combination. There he is, right in the back there, and, and assists on the tackle. But that's just great athleticism. So second down now, and nine to go. Shepard fakes. He tries to throw, but the ball is stripped out of his hands, and it looks like the Raiders have recovered. Glade Central forces the turnover. That's good. Lorenzo Greenwich on the recovery. No, I'm sorry, Dan. I was pointing out the fact that Lorenzo made the play. Oh, okay. He Here came we go. Off the, he came off the edge. There he is. Knocks the ball away. Actually, that was Cartavius Davis, number 29. And look who's got ball. it. Big number 77. Jartavius picks up the football. Boy, that breaks your heart because Pahokee was moving the ball. And on that play, we had Cartavius Davis causing the fumble and Jatavius Jackson recovering. Not too often you'll get a Cartavius and a Jatavius involved on the same play, but it happened here tonight in the Muck Bowl. Different so, defense. First down now for the Raiders. Holly back, looking deep. Wanted to throw it, but keeps it and is still on his feet, but is finally dragged down for what is going to be a loss of a couple of yards. He had a few men deep on the play, wanted to go to them, but ran out of time as he was too close to the line of scrimmage. What, what was that? It's a four, but here's the replay. He, he audibled into this stand when he saw the man coverage underneath, and he audible to four verticals, which all receivers go deep. They were covered, and he had to get what he could get. But I'll tell you what, that is the first time Pahokee has been in that five-man front, and that's the kind of defense they need to stop the running game of Glade Central. And Taras McKinley coming off of the field uh, limping. And we're gonna get a timeout uh, Pahokee just before the snap on second down here. Obviously, uh, Leroy Foster seeing something that he wanted to talk over with his uh, defensive unit. What he saw was Travis Benjamin, number three, on the far side of the field with nobody on him. And Travis was going crazy. He's got his <laughs> arms up in the air. And, and that's the thing you don't want to do. You don't want to make them obvious the fact you're not being covered. But Coach Foster saw it because it was on their side of the field and called a timeout. That's why he had to do that. And you hate to do that, I'm sure, as a coach especially in a tight game like this where you may need a timeout down the stretch. Defensive timeouts are the worst because you, you, you don't use them for you. We want to thank the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office uh, for sponsoring the Muck Bowl tonight. And also special thanks to the Miami Dolphins, the Education Network, and Palm Beach County Channel 20. All right, ready to resume as Holly is back in the shotgun. An interesting formation here, Bill. Five wide. 
rolls to his left, comes back, and goes to a man on the sideline, and he has got it. That, once again, is Deontay Thompson on the reception, and it's just good enough for a first down. Yeah, Tom, he's big time. He comes back to the ball. He does some things that not only are instinctive, but here's the replay. Holly rolls out to his right. He's looking deep. He's trying to look down the middle of the field. But Thompson comes back to the ball. Watch the nice catch he makes laying out for it while the ball's in front of him. Good work by our cameraman there. Yep, very nice catch and a first down. And right at the 48-yard line now. Bad snap. Holly gets it back, but he is under the gun and stays on his feet somehow. That's going to be a loss on the play, but I'm impressed by the balance and uh, cool-headedness of Mr. Holly on that play. Well, the bad snap got him again, Dan. It was one of those snaps that everyone that has been bad has been to his right and offset. But <laughs> Holly is, his center of gravity is so low that you've got to hang on to him. He's one of those backs you don't try to tackle low because if you tackle him low, you're going to get a, you're going to get a mouthful of nothing. Frankly, I don't know how this team lost two games this season. They must have been playing some pretty good competition to do that. But uh, with the, uh, Holly actually emerged late in the season, so that could be one of the reasons why as well. Holly now scrambling to his left, looking to throw. He's got a man open and a catch by number three. That's Travis Benjamin, who is going down the sidelines all the way for the touchdown. But there is a flag on the play. And if I had to guess, Bill, I'm going to say that possibly Mr. Benjamin pushed off before he made the catch. There, that's the call, and they're celebrating, but it's coming back. The quarterback does a great job here of rolling out and throwing the little lob ball, but Benjamin pushed off, and he, he didn't do it intentionally. He did it because he's fighting for the ball. An outstanding call by the official. It was clear to us that, that that's how he got the ball, and it was the right call. Well, the Pahokee coaches were screaming on the sideline right after afterwards. And, uh, you know, a, a close call, I, I guess you could say, in a way, and, and one that, uh, you know, the, the Blue Devils have to be very relieved at the moment that it went their way. Right, and it, how much speed does Travis Benjamin have? My goodness gracious, there's speed all over the field. You can't, you can't count on anybody not to cover. You've got to cover them all. Here's... Here's the little lob out here if we get it. That's a nice touch. He's just trying to let his wide receiver make a play. I don't think we're going to get the we'll push off. We, no, we no, didn't get didn't the push off it. and handed it before that. But Benjamin, great speed down the sideline. I tell you, we see players on Saturday not make any better catches than that. And now on third down and about 35, a little swing pass out to the flats. Could have been disastrous, but falls incomplete. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Norman uh, Griffith on the coverage for Pahokee. Yeah, a real nice job by Griffith. He sees the back release to the flat. And his job, if a back crosses his face, he goes and takes him. And there was nothing home there. They tried to tried a little bit of a screen play to the right. And that it, there's going to leave us one play with less than a second to go before the end of the third quarter. And that will happen on the uh, punt. Tavares Motley doing the honors for the Raiders. Well, we've had two big turnovers, one for each team in the second half. He gets the punt off. It's wobbly and off the side of his foot. Fielded on the run by number nine. And a fumble. Newkees Richardson re retrieved it and fumbled the ball. And let's see who's got it. Glades is saying they do, but no. Uh, Pahokee dodges a large bullet there and hangs on to the football. A daring a daring maneuver by Nukis Richardson to get the ball. But that is going to mark. Oh, here's, oh, here's the, the replay. replay. And he does exactly what he's supposed to do. He gets the ball. What he couldn't account for was how many people that were still on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, stripped right out of his I hands. Mean, he, he didn't have any problem holding on to the ball. What a good and, play by the punt return. And Pahokee very lucky to still have possession. It's the end of the third quarter and we have to take a break. We will be back with a wild fourth quarter. We think it's going to be. You're watching Palm Beach County Friday Night Football. <laughs> 